Good day, Mount Calvary Baptist Church family and friends. My name is Lady Rose and I'm from the Mount Calvary Baptist Church in Mullica Hill. We are so excited to see that you have joined us on this day. We will start off today's service with a song by our Minister of Music, Brother Dwight Ross and friends. Be blessed. Amen. We truly want to thank Brother Ross and friends for that uh, encouraging selection. And now we just want to offer you a word from God, and we hope that you are encouraged and that you're blessed by it. And it's coming from two scriptures today. The first is Exodus 14 and 5. And Exodus 14 and 5 states this. When the king of Egypt was told that the people had fled, the mind of Pharaoh and his servants was changed toward the people. And they said, what is this we have done that we have let Israel go from serving us? Matthew 19, 16 through 22 says this, And behold, a man came up him to him, saying, Teacher, what good deed must I do to have eternal life? And he said to him, Why do you ask me about what is good? There is only one who is good. If you would enter life, keep the commandments. He said to him, Which ones? And Jesus said, You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. Honor your father and mother, and you, and you should love your neighbor as yourself. The young man said to him, all these I have kept, what do I still lack? Jesus said to them, if you would be perfect, go, sell what you possess and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven and come follow me. When the young man heard this, he went away sorrowful for he had great possessions. The topic this morning is simply let it go. Let it go. Each day, of our lives brings different things, new experiences, and those things bring a variety of different things to us. Some that are good and some that are bad. Some that are beautiful and some that are not. Some things that are easy and some things that are tough. Some happiness and some hurt. The question is what do you hold on to and what do you let go? One of our biggest problems of, and as human beings is letting go of what needs to be let go. And we find that we don't let go for various reasons that we all may individually have or find justification for. 
And let's look at the stories. In the book of Exodus, we find in the first chapter that there arose a new king in Egypt who did not know Joseph and all that he's done for them and became threatened by the number of Israelites that were in the land. He then put the Israelites in slavery. And if I fast forward a bit to where we are now, the Israelite called out to God for their work had become very hard and, and God heard them. And God sent Moses back to Egypt to Pharaoh to get the Israelites out of there. We do know that Pharaoh would not let them go. Now God sent different plagues to Egypt and Pharaoh would say that he was going to let him go and then change his mind. Now we also know that the word states that God hardened Pharaoh's heart, but God did not harden it each time. There were times where Pharaoh hardened his own heart and would not let the people go. And because he would not let the people go, he faced devastating consequences. Then we also read about a young rich ruler here who came to Jesus and said, Jesus, what good deed must I do to have eternal life? He says, I follow the commandments, but what do I lack? And then Jesus said, well, sell and give away your possessions and come and follow me. And we find that the young rich ruler here went away sorrowful because he could not let go his possessions. And because he could not let them go, he faced devastating results of not having eternal life. You see, not letting go of what needs to be let go can put us on a road to devastating consequences. Here we see two examples, one of pride and the other of physical possessions. Now, many of us have problems letting those things go that we just discussed, but there are other things that are just as hard for us to let go as well. And there are things in our lives that we even know that we need to let go, but we don't. And look here, we, we even know that some of those things are not good for us and they stop us and they trip us up and they have us heading in the wrong direction and they stop us from having a rekindled relationship with someone all because we won't let it go. You know, some of us won't let situations go. Some of us won't let hurts go. Some of us won't let feelings go. We just won't let it go. And so let's first discuss why we won't let them go and what the struggle is with letting them go. You know, Pharaoh didn't want to let the people go, yes, because his heart was hardened, but it was pride also that stood in the way. Pharaoh did not want to be told or forced to do something unless he decided that he was going to do it. After all, he was the Pharaoh. He was in charge. You see, Pharaoh set it up that the Israelites would be in slavery, and he, you know, worked too hard for it not for it to be taken away against his will. You see, pride stands in the way of many of us not letting something go. And what do we say? Well, we, this is a common thing we say. Well, you know what? It's the principle of it. And because of the principle, we stand our ground and don't let go of things. We don't let go of someone who offended us. We, we, we don't let go of someone who hurt us. We don't let go of someone who uh, made a mistake. So again, we stand our ground and we hold on to it all because it's the principle of it. And because of the principle, we need to make a point so we don't let it go. We need to make sure that they get what they should get so we don't let it go. We want them to make sure that they feel guilty about it so we don't let it go. And so we hold on to some of these things for days and months and years instead of letting them go. What good comes out of that from holding on to these things for so long? You know, even if we go to the young rich ruler and the things that he couldn't let go, you know, he couldn't let go of his possessions because he valued them too much. He thought that he could not live without them, therefore he could not let them go. You see, some of us are holding on to things that are standing in between you and God. The young rich ruler possessions were between him and Jesus, and, for, and he couldn't get to Jesus until he let them go. What is standing between you and Jesus that you need to let go? Is it earthly possessions? You know, and when I say that, I mean, what thing consumes you so much that it affects your relationship with God? Matter of fact, uh, that earthly possession, whatever it is, it, it stops you from going to church all the time. It, it stops you from doing what God really wants you to do uh, because you're so consumed with that thing. Or maybe it's sin. Yes, we, you know, we all have sin and come short of the glory of God. But what sin is it? that you refuse to let go. In other words, you refuse to turn away and repent from it. That, 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 what sin is it that's constantly standing between you and God? What sin is it, like, like the young rich ruler's possessions, that you think that you can't live without, and therefore you don't let it go? 
You know, the young rich ruler could not let them go because he valued his possessions more than God. And that was proven. That was proven because Jesus said, sell them. And he didn't. What did he do? He turned around and said, I can't sell them. So therefore, he was more attached and dependent on his possessions rather than attached and dependent on God. Hence, why Jesus told him to get rid of them. Because Jesus saw that he was connected to them. And as long as he was connected to his possessions, he would never be connected to God. And so there are some things in our lives that we need to evaluate, that we need to honestly consider if they're between us and God. And if we, are, we need to look and see if we're depending on them more than God. You see, it is easy to say we're depending on God, but your actions, whether they are out in the open or in private, speak of who you're really dependent on. And those are the things that we need to let go. You see, the young rich ruler could not let them go because he thought that he could not live without those possessions. And that's what Satan wants us to believe with the things that we have in our lives. Satan wants us to think that we have to have these things in our lives when in actuality, all you need is Jesus. What is it that you won't let go? You see, in the story, God sent Pharaoh many signs and he still would not let go. How many more signs does God have to send you for you to realize that you need to let it go? Pharaoh always said that he would let them go, but then he didn't. And if, even if we look at us, sometimes from our mouths, we say that we let it go, but our hearts are still holding on to it, which is why we always go back to it. What will it take? What has to happen uh, for you to let it go? For Pharaoh, it was devastation. What will it be for you? And I want you to look at some of the effects of not letting it go. For the young rich ruler, it was devastation of not having eternal life. For Pharaoh, it caused devastation for himself and others. Not letting go of things will definitely cause a variety of effects in our lives. Number one, when we don't let go, watch this, then we hold on to these unnecessary weights in our life. So now we're holding on to things that carry weights that we don't have to hold on to. And then number two, watch this, when we don't let them go, these things go, it takes up space in our lives and it stops some other good things that could be coming in. But because of the stuff we're not letting go, it's taking up space and we can't allow these other things to come in. Then also number three, some of the things that we won't let go could be costly. So now we're spending out of our own pockets because we won't let them go. And now you're using up what you could use somewhere else in your life. And then not only that, when we're not letting go some of the things that we know we need to let go and they're standing between us and God and they're causing this different types of conflict and, and, and resentment and all of these things, what that does, it takes us out of line with the Word of God. And so now we are not where we need to be to be able to receive the blessings of God. And, and, and all because we won't let things go. Let it go. What good is it doing for you? And let me say this to you, if that thing that you won't let go is something dealing with you and another person because they hurt you, because they offended you, because they left you, uh, because they did this or they did that, what good is it doing you to continue to hold on to that? We cannot control someone's actions. We cannot change their thoughts. We cannot change people. And yet we waste our time and energy trying to do so. You know, one of the worst things is many times we are holding on to these things, holding resentment towards someone, while the other person isn't even thinking about those things and has moved on with their life. And so now we're held down because we choose to hold on to it. And I know this is hard what I'm about to say, but you know what we need to do? We need to forgive them. If they hurt you, forgive them. If they left you, forgive them. You know, sometimes we have to forgive people who aren't even sorry just so we can release the weight that we are holding on to that is affecting our lives every single day. And then even this, some of us won't let go of our own past mistakes. All you think about, all you hold on to is how you messed up, how badly you handled something, how you made the wrong choices, how, how you may have affected others. And so now because you won't let it go, you can't move forward and it constantly holds you down. 
You know, there was a story in the Bible where, where, where David felt bad because he was leading his men out to fight only to find when they came back home, all their wives and children had been taken captive. And David was upset because it was his fault. He was the leader and he was responsible for the men's families. But although David was down, he did not stay down. The Bible stated that he encouraged himself in the Lord. Why? Because he had to move on. As long as he held on to it, then he would not be able to move forward. And that the longer he would be down. You see, we all make mistakes. Yes, every one of us. But watch this. We have to learn to accept what we cannot change. Can I say that again? We all make mistakes, we all do. But we have to learn to accept the things that we cannot change. We can't go back in time and change anything. If we messed up, we messed up. We did something wrong, we did something wrong. You see, we can't spend all of our time wishing things were different. But what we must do is live in the present and make decisions what is best for us right now. Do not live bound in chains when you have the key. Get up, let go, and move forward. And so, and if you're like the young rich ruler, and you can't let go of your possessions, or, or, or you can't let go of the sin, again, that is a trick of the enemy, Satan, allowing you to think that you need those things. But number one, what we must do is rebuke him in the name of Jesus. And let me let, if you think about it, you didn't always have those possessions and you were okay. You didn't always have that particular sin in your life and you were okay. So you know what that tells me? You don't really need it. And you are able to let go and survive. Saints of God, as I'm coming home, I want you to understand letting go is a choice. What choice will you make? You can choose to hold on to something that adds unnecessary weight, that causes havoc in your life, that holds you down, or you can choose to let it go and set yourself free of it. It's a choice. It's a decision. What will you do? Let it go. Amen. We pray that you were blessed and encouraged by the word of letting things go. And now we just want to offer an opportunity for someone to give their life to Christ. You know, God offers a free gift, which is his son, Jesus, that he gave so that we can have eternal life and so that our sins can be forgiven. And it's a free gift. There's nothing that you have to do. All you have to do is accept them in your heart. Admit that you're a sinner. Believe that Jesus died on a cross for our sins and just confess him as Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And if you do those three things, you too can be saved. And we hope that today you make that decision to do so. Let us pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for all that you have done for us, for the continuing blessings that you bestowed upon our lives. God, right now, I'm asking that you encourage everyone who is listening right now, Lord, and let them know, God, that there are some things that we can let go, because all we have to do is hold on to your unchanging hand. Lord, I ask that you bless us, you keep us, and you forgive us for our sins, Lord, and just continue to protect us in every way. And these things we ask in the precious name of Jesus, we all say amen. God bless you. At this time, we would now like to encourage our members of Mount Calvary to send in their tithes and offerings. And if you would like to support us in giving, please go to our website at www.mcbcmh.org and click on the Donate tab. You will also find on our website our weekly schedule. We would also like to hear from you. Maybe you're interested in membership or just a simple prayer request. You can email us at mountcalvarymh at yahoo.com. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and our website. We hope you have been blessed. God bless you.